Well, it's hard to believe that it's already week seven. Uh, the semester is moving quite quickly, I think. Uh, your first really uh, big, more difficult task is due Sunday night, uh, writing the literary analysis. And I hope by now that you've been paying a lot of attention to the discussion forums. Uh, there's a lot going on in there. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of ideas. They serve as brainstorming for this entire uh, unit and particularly for this, this paper, okay? It's due Sunday night, but I'd really urge you to get it done before then so that you can enjoy the uh, uh, four-day weekend coming up. Um, deadline the same. It hasn't changed any. I still need, you know, early next week to get these papers graded, get them back to you in a timely fashion. The um, issue here is it's harder. It's harder than a memoir. You wrote a memoir uh, last time, and I was looking for paragraphs, basically uh, unified paragraphs, and most of you, you know, accomplished that pretty well. I was also looking for grammar issues, and there weren't really any major grammar issues. A couple of minor things. I saw a lot of run-on sentences where you're not using and correctly. Let me quickly go through this. If you go to the store and to the mall, that's one sentence with no comma before the and, okay, because you have just one subject. I went to the store and the mall. You had one subject, one verb, and then two objects, store and mall, okay? So you don't use a comma any place. But if you say, I went to the store and I went to the mall, that's two complete sentences, and you have to connect them by comma and. So don't use a comma before and unless you have to. And the, one of the few times you really have to is when you're connecting two sentences with and, okay? I went to the store, I went to the mall. That's two sentences, all right? I went to the store, I went to the mall. So if you say, I went to the store and I went to the mall, that's two sentences. It has to be comma and. So just keep that in mind. That was the only major uh, grammar error that I saw in the entire two sections. So congratulations. So as I said, this essay is harder. As I've said many, many times, though, the uh, textbook really walks you through these projects. I'm not making them up out of whole cloth, okay? And so if you would turn to page 150 in your textbook, uh, it starts off talking about uh, you need to compose a strong thesis for this essay. This essay is actually about something. It's about a point of view that you have about barn burning, okay? And I've tried to help you formulate your point of view by talking about theory, particularly Marxist theory and uh, feminist theory. So your point of view needs to be informed by Marxist theory and feminist theory. Now, you don't have to say specifically that this is what the Marxists would do or this is the feminists would do. You just use that theory inside your head to help you frame your observations of the barn burning story by Faulkner, okay? So page 150 talks specifically uh, about composing a strong thesis. And any time the textbook underlines something, highlights it in a color, if you'll look over to the left margin, you'll see the other pages in which this particular item that's been highlighted is referenced. So if you need to know more about what a thesis is, all right, in this case it says turn to page 273 and 275, and it really walks you through um, uh, you know, the composition of a thesis. Now, of course, I have a lecture about that, too, all right, a YouTube lecture. Uh, but, you know, as an Internet course, a lot of it's self-directed, a lot of it's self-learning. You have to do this on your own. I'm not there to whack you over the head and tell you exactly what a thesis statement is and then get you in class to, you know, write thesis statements for 50 minutes, okay? So, you know, be glad of that, all right? But that means that if you're not quite comfortable with that, you need to spend some time in the textbooks, spend some time uh, looking at the pages that it references, and then also please look again at my lecture on writing a thesis statement, okay? It's, it's in this unit, all right? Then uh, if you breeze on through over to page 151 of your textbook, and this is the chapter, chapter 14, about writing literary analysis, uh, You'll see in the middle, there are two spots where it says, it talks to you about pay attention to matters of style. And I did run across this a little bit in the first paper. Um, basically, this says in informal papers, it's okay to use the first person. You're not writing informal papers anymore, okay? The memoir, we're done with the memoir. You're not writing any more informal papers. For this class, and generally for other classes, you're not writing informal papers. So it says, for example, in this case, if it were okay, you might say, I believe Frost's narrator, a poem about Robert Frost, has little basis for claiming that one road is less traveled. But in more formal essays, you'd turn this around, you'd make the, uh, the assertion directly, which is what I recommend, or which I, matter of fact, demand now in your writing, that you get very direct. Just make your assertion. So in this case, it says, uh, make your assertions directly. You claim the authority. You're the author of this essay, right? You're in charge. You're an adult now. You're in college. You're not in high school, all right? This is very important that you act like an adult, all right, uh, in terms of your um, uh, academic uh, endeavors, all right? So it says, just claim the authority to make statements about the text, like this. Frost's narrator has no basis for claiming that the road is less traveled. Just come out and say it, 
You don't have to hedge it. You don't have to back into it. You don't have to beat around the bush. Just say it. Frost can't do this. Frost is a moron. You don't have to say, I believe that Frost is a moron. Okay? I hate Robert Frost, by the way. like a little bit of his poetry, but not a lot. Um, okay. The other thing is, is basically you write in the present tense all the time. You're writing in the present tense. Sometimes when you're referring to something that actually happened in the past, you know, you're talking about history, then, you, you know, you have to be have past tense. But you're writing in the past tense. Frost, in this case, Faulkner claims Abner Snopes does this. Okay, you don't have to talk in the past tense. Most writing is in the present tense. So, so don't, don't belabor that point too much. Then right underneath that, it says make sure you cite and document, yes, document, document your sources appropriately. It says use MLA citation. We're up to that now. And document styles unless told otherwise. It also says format quotations properly. And use signal phrases, all right? And those signal phrases are just simply F Faulkner writes, comma. Then, you know, quote his text. Or according to one author, you know, when you're looking at the uh, Literary Resource Center, you know, according to Jane Smith, comma, Faulkner does this, this, and this, all right? So make sure you have those little signal phrases uh, referring to the author. Okay, Faulkner, Faulkner said, Faulkner wrote, Faulkner must believe. Uh, one researcher notes, one researcher, one researcher says, one researcher reports, comma, then the quote. Okay, don't just plunk the quote down in there. So this is highlighted in your textbook in blue, and it's covered on, and then in the margin you'll see where it's covered, okay? Then if you turn to the final page of the chapter, page 152, 52, you see these little green boxes. That tells you exactly how to organize your essay. It spells out for you how to organize your essay. You don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Organization is very important. If you don't know where to start, can't get a feel for it, just go to these boxes and walk yourself through it. You can walk yourself through this essay simply by reading the textbook. This doesn't have to be um, rocket science. You don't have to send me emails saying, Mr. Weller, I don't know what you want. It's absolutely right here in the textbook. If you don't feel you've done enough brainstorming, uh, go to the discussions. There's a lot of good material from each other, uh, from your peers there in the discussions. Take a look at that. That will give you some ideas. Okay. So, hey, I need to... Um, get done with this because they get too long otherwise. But uh, dig in. If you have questions, email me uh, Monday through Friday. But please don't say, Mr. Weller, I don't know what you want because it's spelled out really clearly in the textbook. It's spelled out clearly in my lectures. It's spelled out clearly in the discussion. So, hey, have fun. Think of this as a fun assignment, okay? Once again, I'm looking for your best writing, looking for focus paragraphs. This time I'm looking for a good thesis statement. I'm going to be checking more thoroughly that you understand how to quote material and how you do signal phrases, how you incorporate the quoted material into your own narration, okay? Remember, don't quote too much stuff. You know, a sentence per paragraph is plenty. Don't let the quotes do your writing. You're supposed to do the writing yourself, and then the references to the text, the references to the research, simply support, illustrate, and amplify what you just said. You have to say it. Okay, have fun.